today is to continue the series, Fight For It. Now, this message today is for someone who is going through something. Someone that has something on their plate. Someone that has a trial in front of them, a situation that falling before them. This word is for you. Now, if you're not going through th- anything and things are just working out well, praise the Lord. But this message is someone who is going through something. And our established verse for this series comes from Matthew eleven, twelve. Church, can we say this together? Let's see if we can do that, right? Amen. I didn't try with the early service because they still was kind of getting waking up a little bit. Amen. Let's see. We're a little bit awake. Amen. Y'all with me? Yes. All right. Let's start. All right. Let's try this out. And from the time of John, the kingdom of heaven, forcefully advancing. Yeah. The, amen. Praise God. And so the kingdom has always been forcefully advantage. The kingdom of God has been advanced. No matter what kind of turmoil or kind of situation that came down on the kingdom of God, it always advanced. I remember they came, communism came down on them in China, and they said nobody can meet in church and nobody can, can, can assemble. And guess what? All these little churches start birthing now. And, and they, I think they're, if I that's check my record, that's the biggest church uh, record it right now because you can't stop God's kingdom. Amen. They could come in this door right now. All they're going to have is 100 different churches birthed tomorrow because that's how God's kingdom goes. It, it will continue to advance. And it always will have violent people attacking it. You ever share your faith? You ever see someone attacking your faith? Is this new idea? You know what's amazing about the Word of God, and some people call it an archaic book? Notice that you read the Word of God, and it's applicable and it's relevant for today. Have you ever experienced somebody attacking your faith? It's still going on, right? Is it going to stop you? We still forcefully advancing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the weapons of warfare, we have been, uh, and I encourage you. If you have time, go back to those lessons. Um, go back and listen to them. They're all online. Uh, and the weapons of warfare, we, we started off with our weapon is our tongue. Our tongue. How do we use our speech, right? You ever heard the verse, life and death comes from the power of the tongue, right? How we use our words are important. They are to build up or to tear down a powerful weapon. Our weapons of warfare is our giving. Our weapon is our giving. I've known and, and been in church services where somebody talk about giving, it's like, oh, my goodness, they're talking about giving again. They're talking about this again. But giving is a blessing. Giving furthers the kingdom of God. It should be a time that we worship and praise. See, I physically can't go all the places that I would love to see God work, right, advancing, right? And so what happens is when I give to that, it allow God's kingdom to move past what I personally can do. And you can sit back and praise and watch God working because you have given. It's a weapon. The weapon is our mission, our mind, our battlefield of the mind. We win the battle of the mind. We will win. How about our message, our mess, our testimony? Our testimony is a weapon that God uses it because it shows us that we've been battle tested. It shows us that in our mess that we, we, we begin to become storm proof and that we have a foundation in Christ. I don't know about you. When I hear somebody speak, I want to hear a little bit about what they've been through. I just don't want to hear their theological position or their knowledge, which is great. I want to hear how it worked practically in their lives. Storm proof. See, smooth seas do not make skill for sailors. Strength does not come from winning. It, it comes from the struggles as the struggles develop your strength. Anybody been through something? And at the other end of something, you came back with a character 
Uh, you come through it with a different mindset. You ever had a trial that was similar to one another and you went back the second time and said, oh, we got this, Lord. <laughs> we got That's easy. Satan, you better try something else, Lord. I've been through that. The strongest steel is forged by, 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 by fire. In the midst of these spiritual battlefield, there's opportunity. There's a word in Asian, in, in, in Asian culture that is the same word that's used for difficulties is the same word they use for opportunities. Same word. for di- So when difficulties come your way, are you using it for an opportunity, an opportunity to grow in God, an opportunity to, tr- to have your, place your faith in Jesus, an opportunity to build character? My job today and the title of this method is Methods of War. It's my method is a weapon. My method, our strategies, is a weapon. Nothing accomplished well and succeeds well unless it's a strategy, unless there's a method to it. 21 years when this church was birthed, they didn't just wake up one morning and say, oh, let's just have a church service, right? Now, things happen, and God can use things like that, but I'm sure there was prayer. I'm sure there were fasting. I'm sure there was planning. I'm sure there were strategies. I'm sure there were methods to get us here today. And where I got this method is it was from, anybody seen the movie War Room? War Room, yeah. War Room is a powerful message. Uh, it, it really has this, this, this good foundation for relationships. If your relationships are going through something, it kind of centered on that, and it's a good movie, good wholesome movie if you want to go home. It's going to be rainy, right? You know, so if the weather pick up, you know, watching War Room might be a good movie to watch. But in the War Room, it kind of exposed the strategy of this young lady, and, and, and in the War Room, you saw it was her prayer closet. And in her prayer closet, she had notes and, 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 and praise reports and prayer requests, and she had a strategy. She had a method to her madness, as some would say, right? She had a method. But then I started asking, what is a war room, right? That's not a term that, you know, use on a daily basis. But you military folks, anybody served in the military? Amen. Let's, let's give them honor for a minute. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Uh, thank you for your service because what you do allows us to do what we do. So appreciate each one of y'all who served in the military in, in different fashions. But in the war room, and you, got, and, and you can describe it better than me, than the war room, you got your leaders, you got your, your, your um, uh, strategic planning, you got your, uh, the, all the parties in mind, they, they're dialoguing, they're counting up the costs, they're strategically planning, they're weighing out the pros and cons, and they're strategizing about the me- best methods to attack, right? They don't just wake up one day and say, oh, let's go to battle, right? That's not how it works in military guys, right, gals? That's not how it works. They strategize, and they, and they perform methods. They create methods of war, a war room. My method, our method, is a method, is a weapon. But let us pray before we get into the word. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can get into your word. We thank you that that we can be in your house, Lord, and that you created methods for us. You created weapons for us. You created uh, Christ's likeness for us that we can live and stand, God. And, Father, I pray for somebody in this room, whoever it is, Lord, you know and I don't know, who is going through something that is hard and is difficult and they're struggling, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that they will be delivered and have their methods to fight their battle. That, Lord, we win because of you, God. We win because of you, Lord. And, Father, help us not to fight these battles with our own strength, but to help us to to be strong and mighty in you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I was in the huddle. I got a privilege to be in a huddle with uh, King Buddy, Minister Buddy, and Minister Laura, and the rest of the staff. And if you if you haven't had an opportunity to get with them, it's an amazing time. It's almost we had it's almost we had a little mini uh, church or sermonette before we. It's like a little appetizer. And uh, <laughs> a little appetizer before we get get into the service. And, you know, they were sharing about, uh, and King Buddy was sharing that he, he, what he had prepared and what God gave him when he got here shifted. And he was obedient to God because God gave me something very different than he had. And it talked about in Peter, he was in Peter talking about, you know, how, how the power of Christ and the words and how we serve is, is serving unto the Lord because it's God that's power and, and our testimonies and, and how, we, how we operate. It's not from our own strength, right, and not, not from our own flesh and not like the world does, but it's, for, it's from God. And it's, God, it's amazing that he had no clue that the message that was prepared a week ago throughout this week was consistent with God gave him. And then Minister Lord topped it off that, you know, she thought at some time she didn't feel qualified to do what God called her to do, but she showed up anyway, and God is using her. Isn't that the power of God? Isn't that power of God? For none of us in here are qualified. Amen? But God. In, a, in 2 Corinthians, it talks about, And 10, 3 to 4, let's just read it. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world, only the contrary. They have divine power to demolish, demolish strongholds. Demolish strongholds. And if you go back and look at the church of Corn, Paul, Corinth, Paul was struggling with what they call what they call the super apostles, or what we call false apostles. So they had lies that were being drummed up in the church, in the community. They had sin in the camp. And Paul was trying to teach about living righteousness or righteously. Paul was preaching grace and, and the grace of God and the blood of Jesus and a sacrificial lamb. And they were teaching the law. You've been saved by faith. Now you want to com complete this in the law? In the flesh, they were saved. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They can't complete it in the law. They were having issues between the Jews that were being saved and the Gentiles being saved because of their background. That sounds kind of familiar, right? Yeah. Amen. So Paul wasn't dealing with anything different than us. But he understand that the warfare that was happening couldn't be won in the flesh. The warfare that they were going through couldn't be successful if we wage war as the world does. The warfare that they, they was... There was con the conflict that was happening couldn't be waged by their, their old methods, but new in Christ. Verse 3 says it like this. The, uh, the, for though we live in the world, we do not wage, world, wage war as the world does. We do not wage war as the world does. Does We do not wage war as our flesh does. We do not wage war as our old man does. We do not wage war like my mama does. We do not wage war like my brother does. We don't wage war in how we used to wage war. We don't wage war as the world. See, that's a conflict. Because some of us have been trained up many years how to deal with Anybody know what I'm talking about? We know how to wage war with the conflict of the world. Men, we wage war like conflict with our flesh and pride. We know, you, you, and, 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 and Paul is trying to teach us we don't wage war as they wage war. Here the apostle Paul is trying to get the people of Corinth to recognize the warfare in which is engaged is a spiritual and requires spiritual weapons that 
that all powerful through God to demolish to demil- uh, strongholds, to demolish the stronghold. So we live in a natural world. We have natural conflict. But this is a spiritual battle. When the last time that we went through a battle and we got on our knees and prayed? When the last time that we had a conflict with somebody and we began to praise God? When the last time that that work was hard and we began to worship the Lord anyway? When the last time we've been in traffic in Philly and we praise God anyway? (laughs) Somebody know what I'm talking about, right? Or New York, right? Wherever you're from, right? We are not mere mortal men and women who no, who no, no longer follow our sinful nation or the flesh or the world, but instead we follow the spirit of God. It's, it's almost like in counseling, we, we tell people we got to do some breathing exercises, right? You get in a conflict, you got to back off a little bit. And, you, and when you back off a little bit, you allow the Spirit of God, and, and you don't handle it like mortals. You handle it through the Spirit of God. Desmond Dawes was a, uh, Desmond Dawes was a medic vet in the, in the war during World War II. In, in a Marine, he was a Marine pirate, right? First class, right? Combat medic vet. He was also a chaplain, a man of God. <laughs> Early in Desmond's life, He had a conflict that he was part of, and he saw his uncle and his father where a gun was involved. After that conflict, he decided, and his conviction was, I will never pick up another gun. I will never use a gun. You see the conflict, military folks, right? (laughs) <laughs> you in the military, even the civilians understand there's a conflict there. Now, now in the military, and you're a chaplain, you're a medvac, and you're not going to carry a weapon or weapons of the world, I should say. So he was laughed at. He was ridiculed. He was mocked. Until one day, the Battle of Hacksaw Ridge, when we were being destroyed. And missiles flying and, 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 and bullets are flying everywhere. And people are dropping. And, and, and they had no answers. And this one man with the power of God, praying and, 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 and allowing God to work through him, one by one, taking and, 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 and measuring, weighing out who he can say, who he couldn't say. And, and in that, he saved 75 folks. Hacksaw. That is not the power of the world. That is the power of Christ. See, we are limitless. We are limitless into what God is doing in our life. Listen to Isaiah. And that's our first point. In Isaiah 40, 28, I'll read this in the New King James Version. Have you not heard, have you not known, have you not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who might have no might, he increases strength. Even, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Man, I heard some saints in the crowd right now. They knew that verse. They've been through some things. Amen. And the reason why we can have limitless access because we have Full access to the kingdom. Do you understand your methods have full access? So when you're in your methods and when you're, you're creating strategies, your methods have full access to the kingdom. God said, Jesus said, I gave you all access in spiritual realms. Verse 4 says it like this. For the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, 
they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Are we tapping in to that divine power? Or are we trying to figure this thing out by ourselves? That's a wrestling match. God, am I doing this on my own? Am, am, am I trusting you that you have divine, I have access to divine power? Simply divine power, divine is simply God. You have the power of God resting in you. You have the power of God that's for you. You have the power of God at, at, at your fingertips. It's in you. Greater is he, it's in you, than he that's in the world. Are we tapping in to that power? Are we connected to the source? The person of power, powerful. You are able. It's possible. Do we still believe miracles exist? Do we still believe the signs, wonders? Do we still believe that, church? Have we lost something? Or do we believe that God can do things outside of our strength? Has he done something for you outside of your strength? Amen. Amen. Some of us, some of us are miracles in this room right now. In, in uh, Ephesians 3.20, it says... Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we asked or think. Here it is, according to the power at work within us. It's almost like we forget that God has already granted us the power to operate. It's almost like we forget that God has gifted us with the, the, with the strength and the, and the uh the spiritual fortitude to get through to what we got to get through. Get through those trials. God has given you the ability. We're asking for God, and God has said, I already gave it to you. I gave you full access. I didn't hold back anything. You have divine power. And I didn't make this up. This is in God's word. This is God's word. How does this work practically? So uh, I was able to share the story because uh, he gave me permission. One of the Hope House guys down south got into a, a little issue a couple years ago. Um, that's not judge because I'm sure some of us got into some things too, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, we got a couple people, right? <laughs> and so he got into some of the things a couple years ago, but he's living right and he's trying to do the right thing. And, and something old popped up and they had some paperwork on him and they wanted to take him to jail, right? Something that happened years ago, take him to jail. So we... Men of integrity said, we need to go there. We need to go and make this right. And so we went there. And on the way there, I knew that God, I was going to bring him home. God already gave me the word. He's coming home with me, right? You gave me the word, Lord. And so we get in the court. We're in the court all day long, back and forth, courts, prosecutors, cops, every, all the kit and caboodle was all there. And it looked at dicey for some time. They said you got a warrant, paperwork. I didn't know, you know, all the stuff that was going on. And then the judge said, you know what, we're going to lift the warrant. And we're going to give you, <laughs> she gave him grace. He was wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Right? I wish it ended there. So as she, was, as she was allowing him to move on uh, from whatever Zoom, somebody was streaming in from another place, said, hey, there's a warrant from another judge from another county that we have no power or authority over there. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all clapped a little too soon, didn't y'all? <laughs> right? I said, Lord, I was in the back of the courtroom because I looked at the, the, uh, the officer, uh, the female officer. She looked at me. She she pulled up her handcuffs. She started, uh, and I looked at her, and she looked at me. And she was like, I got to lock your boy up. And um, however, yeah, right? it's funny if you're not in there. Right? <laughs> she gave me the signal. She was like, oh, snap. This thing. And she didn't want to. I could tell in her mind she didn't want to do that. But she had to do what she had to do. So, and so she's doing her job, right? She's doing her job. And so she started walking up. I'm like, oh, Lord, you told me, God. I had no power. To change the judge, my, I don't even know who the other judge is. I don't have any authority in that court in the natural way, in the world's way. 
So what did I do? I born born heaven right there in the back of the courtroom. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Deara, Deara prayed. She said, you will be coming home. She prayed at home. I prayed, and we were praying. She said that God was going to bring on. And God gave me the same message and said, Lord, I don't see it, but you said it, Lord. And so I'm going to believe you. And so I'm going to bombard heaven right here in the back of the courtroom. And you, do, and you know what that judge said? She was like, call Judge Taylor up and see if we, it's 430 in the evening. And she said, call Judge Taylor up and get him on the phone, right? Any, any, that, that ever happened to anybody in this room? 4.30, calling another judge. She called another county. And I was like, there's no way she's going to get in touch with it. I mean, I'm flat, you know, my flesh kicked in. I was like, there's no way she's going to be able to get. And so we went through the proceedings. She had a couple more cases. Got a call back. Judge Taylor said, hey, let him go. We'll deal with it another time. Lift him. The power of God stands past our understanding, stands past what we can do. Our methods are weapons. Your method is a, method, is a weapon. For our TPT, any TPT people in here? Got one, two, two, three. Oh, we love you. <laughs> All right. I got one for you. And I love this. I love the way they unpack this one. So I got to give you up on this one. It says we are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive and purposely uh, taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Dear and I in the southern region, the, the, the thing we're talking about, stretching our arms in the southern part of this jersey, running to various people throughout the week, throughout the month. Uh, we ran into a young boy, young man, uh, that young king that was going through some life things and, and some life things. Um, in that story, he got the chance to tell me a little bit more of a story. And what do you know? The power of Jesus in, in a family here. And I want to brag on the Bradleys right now. Because the power of Christ that worked in them years ago, they saw this young man go down a road that, 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 that was not promising. They brought that young man in his house. And they planted seeds in that young. He's still talking about how wonderful God used them in his life, thanking them as a young man now for what they did. So, Kenny, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to bring Tom, Pastor Tom and minister. I know they're not here. And they won't talk about it. But that is the power of Christ through a person's lives. But that only happens if you know Jesus. That's what happens. And, and knowing Jesus is not this sophisticated way, but it says simply in the word, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you will be saved. You will be saved. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And if you don't know Jesus, the power that we're talking about, the person that we're talking about, you can receive him today. The big word is called salvation. The short word is called you'll be saved. 